Hello, hope you're well. I'm gonna get right to it tonight. I'm gonna to continue my Frank Tovey fad gadget talks because it's Frank Tovey and he's 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 a classic artist and he needs to be talked about and he's not around anymore and he hasn't been around for a long time and I feel like I need to keep that memory alive as much as possible in terms of what I am capable of here on YouTube because a lot of artists like this get forgotten about and I want to do my part. These kinds of artists I find very exciting even 20 plus years after their death. And I've been listening to Fad Gadget a lot this week and this weekend. And it's funny with Fad Gadget and Frank Tovey, he's he created so many different styles of music and so many genres and he dipped his toes in so many waters and put his hands in so many pies. It's hard to describe what he did. You just have to experience it. And I talked about a little bit who Frank Tovey was a couple months ago when I did my first Frank Tovey video. I'm not going to repeat myself, but I don't necessarily remember what I said back then. So um, I'm going to do my best to not repeat myself, and I don't want to go into Frank Tovey's biography, but I will briefly say that he died 20 plus years ago, and he was a huge influence on bands like Depeche Mode and Ministry and these types of groups and artists that I talk about on my channel. And I want to dig into the meta when it comes to the details of these bands that we already know and love and the bands that have already broken through and are huge and successful. And I want to dig into why they became what they became and branch off from there and branch off again and look at the producers and the remixers and Especially with Depeche Mode, because a lot of these producers that worked with Frank Tovey ended up working with Depeche Mode. They were all on the same label, Mute, Daniel Miller's label. Daniel Miller also produced Frank Tovey as he, as he produced Depeche Mode. Other producers were people like the producer we see on this album, John Fryer. Now, dig out your Depeche Mode records from that mid 80s era i'm talking about like some great reward construction time again black celebration dig those 12 inches out especially you will see john fryer's name on a number of their 12 inches from that era john fryer produced this and i'm going to talk about his third album with this video let me take it out of its sleeve so you don't see the glare as much this is under the flag this is fad gadgets third album and just to remind people i'm sure you already know this people who are big frank tovey fans you already know this but fad gadget is frank tovey it's the same it's the same guy frank tovey worked with a huge collaborative of artists but fad gadget was frank tovey's project and like I mentioned before, I'm not going to go deep into Frank Tovey's biography. I already did that with my last Fad Gadget Frank Tovey video. I talked about Tyranny and the Hired Hand last time. That was the that was a Frank Tovey solo album. And I wanted to start there because it was so different from everything else he did. Like this. His third album, released in 1982. This came this came after I'm trying to think when did i think it was 1981 i'm trying to remember the the order of his i think fireside favorites was his first album that was 1980 and then incontinent came out in 1981 it must have because this came out in 1982 yes incontinent came out in 81 under the flag was 82. and this is a very important album i'm sorry about the glare i kind of i'm trying to make sure that there's not a ton of glare here, but uh, lighting is odd in my room, so I'm doing my best. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my screen here, trying to avoid the glare. But there is the track listing. This came out in 1982, produced by John Fryer, and this was, this was a classic Fag Gadget album in terms of like Fireside Favorites and, and Incontinent. It was a little less, arguably a little less cabaret-ish than Incontinent. Um, you know, Frank Tovey, again, was a mime 
before he started doing this. He was all about performance art. And I've talked about this in the last video, but check out his live footage on YouTube. There's plenty. I've looked it up myself. There's plenty of live stuff from Frank Tovey. He was a sight to see. I never saw him live personally. I just wasn't old enough. I was a, I was a toddler when this came out. Way too young. I didn't get into fat gadget until the late 80s. It was I, I was still a kid, but back here, you know, I was like seven, eight years old, man. I wasn't old enough to, to be into this at this time. But I have done enough research and YouTube watching where I know that his early shows were a sight to see. He was all about performance art, man. And he put on quite the show. And under the flag, I, oh, by the way, too, this artwork by Anton Corbin, another Depeche Mode staple. I want to keep making these connections because I have a lot of Depeche Mode fans that watch my channel. I'm a huge Depeche Mode fan, obviously. That's why I talk about them. So all the connections are there. Photography by Anton Corbin. And... John Fryer produced this. This this was the first fag gadget on that I felt where Tovey was sort of branching out a little bit. He did with Incontinent, but this one was a little more complex, a little more sophisticated, I thought. There's some deeper tracks on here. There's some four to the floor type, you know, typical synth pop, synth pop slash punk tunes that fag gadget was known for on here. And those were released as singles, and I'll get to those. But there were some deeper tracks on here for sure. Wheels of Fortune is, a, is an example, the last song on side one. There are definitely some, some different vibes happening with, with this album than, than what you heard before. And I love, I love that about artists, as I always talk about on this channel. I, I, I love it when artists challenge themselves and deliver albums and music that were not quite accustomed to or even ready for or prepared for and it's unpredictable and Frank Tovey was always unpredictable you could never guess what this guy was going to be up to he just I don't know that he purposely did that he just I think he just was interested in doing what he wanted to do and that there was that's all there was to it he was interested in changing things and doing what inspired him and it wasn't always the same jam that he wanted to produce and i will always forever deeply respect him and artists like that I, in my opinion i think the best artists out there are people that you're not going to love every album from they're going to they're going to take risks and you're not going to love every single thing they've done i think that's good otherwise you're just pumping out the same shit over and over and that's not what you want if you're a true artist you're going to challenge yourself and man, nobody, you can't say that, say that enough about Frank Tovey. I think arguably he's one of the most creative artists that's ever been in terms of music. He was always pushing himself, not just with his music, but his onstage performances as well. His whole aura, his whole, his whole performance, his whole career was based on changing things up and doing things differently. I don't know that he was all that concerned if people understood it or not. He probably was wanting people to not understand it. It's important with art. You don't, you don't want to always grasp what an artist is doing, in my opinion. And that's what Toby did. Let me break this open. This is, I'll show the label. I have it in a generic inner sleeve here just to protect it. It's got one of those old school glossy inner sleeves that can kind of scuff the vinyl over 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 time the more you take it out of the inner sleeve kind of fucks up the vinyl a little bit here's the inner sleeve you get the lyrics which is an important thing for frank toby he always had interesting things to say he just he wasn't a lovey-dovey singer and sometimes you couldn't understand what the hell he was singing about here's an example of some some lyrics from Love Parasite. Love Parasite, you're kicking inside. Try not to fight. Love Parasite. Scream aloud, words without meaning. You lack the gift of speech, but you suck like a leech. Scream aloud, force-fed with sound. Gonna get no sleep tonight. Listen to that noise. It's a hungry voice. Get no sleep tonight. Edgy lyrics. 
edgy music, very claustrophobic music, I think, but in a good way. Claustrophobic doesn't have to be bad. We associate words like that with badness, with intensity, with unpleasantness. I don't, not, especially not with music. I like music that closes in on you, where you feel like the elements are all bashing into your head all, all at once. I mean, that sometimes you need that in your life. It reminds you that, it reminds you that you're alive, man. Otherwise, without that, you, you might as well just turn the radio on and listen to the lady fucking Gaga all day. We need that challenge. We need to be challenged when it comes to sound and music. In my humble opinion, of course, always my humble opinion. Bad Gadget was always doing that. Frank Tovey was always doing that, making us guess what his motives were. Love that about him. And this is a classic album, man. I mean, when I think of the Fad Gadget albums, there there were only four. And he he did more albums as Frank Tovey and you know, after after Gag, he that was his last Fad Gadget album. I don't know where I'd rank this. When I try to rank the four Fad Gadget albums, I don't know I don't know how to do it. They're different. I'd probably choose Fireside fav Favorites because it was the first Fad Gadget album I ever heard out of the four but you know gag might be second under the flag might be i think incontinent generally is my least favorite fad gadget album I, not not to say i don't like it i do very much like it but this would be in a, in a close race for second with gag gag and under the flag are very very good albums and i'm going to talk about gag right after i talk about this in a different video i'm going to separate them awesome album check this out and again i've been talking about the depeche mode connections ministry connections too sorry about the blur there sometimes when i move around <laughs> i move things around too quickly my computer camera loses its focus i lose my focus plenty of times too when i'm doing these videos as as you subscribers know i can lose my focus very easily very quickly oh yes but yes awesome album ministry fans especially you ministry fans who like early ministry with sympathy uh the 12 inches like halloween all day even twitch listen to bad gadget seriously I mean, there is, I, I can't imagine a world where early ministry fans would not love Fad Gadget. I can't imagine it. It's, I just can't. Here is a single from the album. From This is probably my favorite single from the album. There are only a few that came out. For Whom the Bells Toll. You get a couple of versions. Bells Toll 3 and then Love Parasite 2 as the B-side. Excellent record. Get some slightly different versions here. Here are the labels. Nothing, nothing mind blowing. Of course, on mute. Everything that Frank Toby did was on mute. Daniel Miller loved Frank Toby, and we should celebrate Daniel Miller for fostering this man's career and being a huge influence on other mute artists like Erasure and Depeche Mode and you name it. Fad Gadget was the first band that Daniel Miller signed on mute. Hugely influential guy. This is a great single. More photography from Anton Corbin here. Single from the album. Here's another single. I'll take it out of its sleeve so it doesn't glare. Fad Gadget, Life on the Line, version two. And you get version three. And yet another B-side. This is a great 12-inch. And really striking imagery. I love I love the covers where you're you're right away you're you've got an image in your mind before you even hear the music. Wow, look at that reflection. <laughs> my opinions of my opinions of my opinions. Look at that. Anyway, way too much occasional feel good reflecting there. Occasional feel good times three. 
But this is a fantastic 12 inch, my friends. Life on the line. Life on the line. Fad gadget. Seriously, if you ever see a record that have the words fad gadget on it, just pick it up. You cannot go wrong. And I'm going to show this. This was not on the album. This, in fact, was not on any album. But it came out in 1983, the year after this album and before Gag. I Discover Love. This was not on an album, and I'm glad of that, because this is not Frank's best single, in my opinion. He was trying to do something different. That's what he did. We can respect him for that. This single has not aged well. I didn't really love it when I bought it. I don't know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, and I still don't love it. He was going for a very generic 80s sound. It's got kind of lame drums and the, those goofy 80s horns. And I don't know, it's just not, a, it's not good. The B side is the same. I, I like the B side a little bit better, actually, but it's just, it sounds like dated 80s horn pop. I'm not going to go so far to say it sounds like Phil Collins or something, but it, it doesn't. He tried something and it kind of it, it blew back in his face here. I don't think this works very well. But I wanted to show this because this came out the year after this very fine album that I'm talking about here, Under the Flag. And I'm going to do a few more Fad Gadget videos because I just love Frank Tovey and I want people to know about him. He died way too soon. He died in 2001, right as he was getting ready to go on a big tour with, or he, he'd already done some dates with Depeche Mode, but he had planned on doing some more, and he was working on a new Fad Gadget album, and he died. I think he was 45, pretty young, pretty young, man. He'd always had a heart condition since a young age, and it finally, it finally failed on him. So he's been dead for over 20 years, but I want to keep his memory alive as much as I can with these records because they're really special. He was a very heartfelt artist, and, and we have much less of those these days. As this world gets more generic and more fascistic and more mediocre, we need people like this. He may be long dead, but we need to resurrect these people in times like this, I think. True artists, true visionaries, true individuals, which we are sorely lacking in this world right now. People are so happy to fall in line and march and goose step along with the rest of society and do nothing of any individuality. And it's a very depressing thing, in my opinion, and that's why we need guys like this. That's why I've been listening to Fad Gadget recently, because I just... I fear for our future, man. The way people fall in line and the way people sell out, it's very disgusting to me and I don't like it. And it seems like that is the highest thing that people can achieve anymore is selling out and doing something mediocre and doing something very boring. It seems like that is like the, the top of the mountain for people right now. Artistry has definitely taken a swift kick in the balls in recent years and that's when we need people like frank toby we need them keep this memory alive talk to you next time